You are listening to Keystone Stock Talk Podcast, episode 76. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for stopping by. This podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment, and show notes are found at www.keystocks.com. Come back often, and feel free to add the podcast to your favorite RSS feed or on iTunes. You can also follow us on Twitter at Keystocks and on Facebook or via our 24-hour streaming radio station, pennystocks.fm. And keep submitting your stocks via the usual social channels or at our website, keystocks.com, for our Your Stock Our Take segment. And we just might review your stock in an upcoming show and let you know if it is a buy, sell, or hold. This week in our Your Stock, Our Take segment, we take a look at Name Silo Technologies Corp, symbol URL on the CSE, a low-cost provider of domain registration and management services with over 3 million domains and customers from approximately 160 countries. The microcap is now posting positive EBITDA and tremendous revenue growth. A listener asks us our take on the stock. Our star of the week is Real Matters Inc., symbol R-E-A-L on the TSX, which serves the U.S. and Canadian residential mortgage industries in two primary segments, one under the Solidify brand. The company offers residential mortgage appraisals and services. Number two, under the IV3 brand, the company offers the Canadian property and casualty insurance industry insurance inspection services. The stock is up 7.8% this week alone and 23.4% in the last month. Can it continue? We'll let you know. Finally, our dog of the week is Hexo Corp, symbol H-E-X-O on the TSX, a high growth but currently cash flow negative licensed cannabis company. The company ranks as one of the largest producers in the country, operating roughly 2.4 million square feet of facilities in Ontario and Quebec. The stock is down 13.8% on the week and 39.8% in the last three months. Is it a dog or opportunity? Okay, we're going to get right into the show this week. Again, I have uh, Aaron this week on assignment. He's in Europe on vacation, so I'm going to have Brennan co-hosting with me. How are you doing today, Brennan? Good, Ryan. Morning, morning. Yeah, good morning. It's a busy week. We just released our breakthrough turnaround report. Our clients got that in their accounts last week or last night. It was uh, emailed out. So all of them are going through that over that now. We'll get some questions over the course of the week. We introduced six new companies into our coverage uh, and uh, there's five new buys from that one we're monitoring. There's also 12 companies in our uh, mini report section there that we're monitoring for potential entry points over the course of the year. So about 80 pages of content, a lot to go through for our clients, and uh, I'm sure we'll get some questions in our upcoming chats on some of the companies there. Yeah, but it's it's quite a long read. It's quite a long read. I mean, I, I've just started it. I'm probably about a quarter into it. Uh, and, and I know I've said on the podcast before, I, I'm excited to, uh, you know, l- look at the companies that are in it. Uh, being a, a younger investor as myself uh, with, you know, breakthrough and turnaround companies, uh, some of them, you know, offer a little bit higher risk. So being that younger investor, I, I can afford to, you know, take on that kind of risk. But I, I mean, there's there's some companies that, uh, you know, are, are less risky in there as well. But uh, but yeah, there it's a it's a great read so far. And uh, some some good looking companies for sure. Yeah, and I think the what what we kind of like in these type of reports is the breadth and uh, diversity of companies that we can offer in a report like this. Um, there's uh, such a variety of different businesses that you get to go through, and uh, you know you can really present some unique businesses. And uh, if somebody is looking to add a company in a specific segment of the market, be it medical, be it uh, in the resource sector or gold, if you're looking for exposure there, uh, if you're looking for a high tech, if you're looking for a SaaS firm, uh, consumer brand firm, aerospace, uh, all of those companies and more are represented within this report. So it's a good read. If you want to add some of those to your portfolio, uh, you can take a look at that portfolio. It certainly is when we look at these breakthrough 
or turnaround type businesses, there is some higher risk in some of them than, than the typical companies we look at. But uh, when we do that research, when we look through all uh, all the balance sheets, all the MDNAs, all the financial statements of uh, companies on the TSX and TSX Venture. Some of these companies, the breakthrough or turnaround type stories, come to our attention and we like to bring them to our clients' attention and uh, write up full research reports on them uh, and present them for potential investment opportunities. Also, of course, like we said, there's companies we're monitoring in there and we provide full investment conclusions on 12 that we're monitoring for t- potential entry points over the course of the year. So I encourage clients to log into their accounts now, take a look at that, and potential clients, it's a great time to become a client to our Canadian Growth Stock Research to look at those new additions to our research uh, that we'll be following over the course of the next two to three years. Now let's get right into our Your Stock, Our Take segment. It's time we answer a question on Your Stock in a little segment we like to call Your Stock, Our Take. Buy, sell, or hold. We got a question from a a viewer or a listener, sorry, that came in on Name Silo Technologies. The, The symbol is URL and the exchange it trades on is the Canadian Securities Exchange or CSE, Canadian Stock Exchange. Uh, the current price is 45 cents, market cap about 26.6 million. What does the company do? Well, Name so- Silo is a low cost provider of domain name registration and management services. Name Silo is a high growth register with over 3 million domains and customers from approximately 160 com- countries. Name Silo is one of the largest na- do- name domain registers in the world and offers .com and .net domains as well as the latest top level domains. The company's focus in 2019, and I think we believe this is key, will be to offer an extensive set of new, easy-to-use cloud-based technology products that will enable name silo customers to establish a digital presence and connect with their customers. Management believes that these new products will further increase core revenues and margin growth for name silo, improve customer retention, and improve the value proposition to its customer base. We will be monitoring that progress closely. Closely. Key points. The company is up around 27% since the beginning of 2019, but has declined somewhat since the end of April, likely along with the market as a whole, as there's no big company-specific negative events that would cause that small slide. The majority of the share price appreciation uh, happened when the industry source Register Owl reported that Name Silo was the second fastest growing domain name registrar on the planet behind only industry giant Alibaba in the month of November 2018. Now, the company was also voted the best register in 2019 in a poll taken by NamePros in an online domain name discussion community. community. Subsequently, on June 18th, the company announced a restructuring of its loan, which resulted in a repayment of approximately $1.28 million in principal of loans. So the financials, let's look at those. Tremendous growth in terms of revenue in the first quarter. Revenue was up to $6.5 million compared to $2.5, or 160% growth over Q1 2018. Net loss fell slightly to 898 thousand compared to 931 in the same period it was the business was adjusted EBITDA positive uh, producing positive adjusted EBITDA of 242,000 roughly compared to a loss of 58,000 in terms of adjusted EBITDA in the first quarter of 2018 now Name Silo has experienced rapid growth in the last year after becoming a public company and has now produced positive EBITDA not only for the quarter but for the trailing 12 month period. This explosive growth can also be seen reflected in reporting that the company has become the second fastest growing domain register behind only Alibaba in November of last year which was a feather in their cap. While the growth we have seen in the last year is tremendous, the company is still reporting negative net income and trades at a very high EV or enterprise value to EBITDA and is quite leveraged with net debt to equity of 1.22 and negative working capital position at present. Now, are there, there are some accounting reasons for that, but it still does have that negative working capital position. While it is an exciting opportunity and may have a place in our portfolio or for those 
people's portfolios that are looking for high risk, high growth companies. It does not meet our full criteria due to the risk in the balance sheet at present and the higher multiple on the stock. Ideally, cash flow will increase lowering debt to cash flow and price to cash flow multiples, producing a more affordable growth business with better certainty. The stock is certainly interesting and we are monitoring the company for these advancements as it reduces its debt exposure. Right now we're on the sidelines, but again, we're monitoring it closely to see if it is a stock we'd like to enter a position in. Yeah, I think it's a good idea that we keep it on the monitor list right now. Uh, the domain register business is an interesting one, and Name Silo is definitely an exciting nano cap. Uh, and, and also, I, I just want to highlight again, I know you said it a couple times, but the fact that Name Silo was the, uh, the second fastest growing domain register on the planet after Alibaba in November of 2018 uh, definitely brings the name a little bit of credibility here. Uh, you, you know, but I also want to say, of, of course, just like coming into your conclusion there, you, you can like a company's growth, uh, but if the valuation and company leverage aren't to your liking, it's probably better to just leave the stock alone uh, and keep it on the monitor list for the time being. Yeah, and, and uh, I agree. And, and you know, we, we've we met with management uh, of this company in the past, um, uh, just just earlier this year at a conference. It uh, seems like uh, sharp individuals, which is good to see. Um, and we'll probably meet with them, uh, you know, sometime this fall at an upcoming conference, uh, continue to monitor the situation. Uh, we'd love to see, you know, some de-risking of the situation in, in certain degrees. But uh, as we monitor, it may become a company that we add to our coverage. But we're highlighting now and our uh, clients can take a look at it going forward. We're going to look at our weekly star. From our stars and dogs segment, it's time for this week's star. 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 I'm going to let Brendan take that over. The company is Real Matters Inc., symbol R E A L in the TSX. Brendan, have at it. Thanks, Ryan. So, Real Matters Inc., R E A L on the Toronto Stock Exchange, currently trading at a price of $9.60 and has a market cap of $817 million. So, the stock has been up 7.5% this week, uh, 23.5% in the last month, and uh, astonishingly, year to date, up 190%, uh, which is quite impressive. So, just looking at the chart here, the company did IPO in May of 2017 at $13 per share. And uh, after the IPO, it trended downward to where it bottomed in late 2018 at $3 per share. So since bottoming, the stock has now regained some of its losses to where it is currently trading at the the $9.60 mark. So Real Matters Inc. is a Canadian network management services provider for the mortgage lending and insurance industries. Uh, The company's platform combines proprietary technology and network management capabilities with tens of thousands of independent qualified qualified field agents. Um, So the company does operate different brands uh, focused on different market segments. So the two here are Solidify brand, which offers residential mortgage appraisals uh, for the US and Canadian residential mortgage industry. And the second here is the IV3 brand, uh, which provides insurance inspection services to uh, the Canadian property and casualty insurance industry. So What is driving the stock upward here? Uh, This week, the stock's performance was driven by better than expected Q3 financial results, uh, which were reported on Wednesday, July 31st. Uh, And these better results were mainly driven by record high U.S. appraisal transaction volumes and its U.S. title volumes, which doubled year over year. Uh, And I also just wanted to touch on uh, what's driving the stock longer term. Uh, I would also say that uh, it is, again, the financial performance that is doing this uh, as the company has been working toward profitability. uh, But I will get into this uh, a little bit more later. So looking at the company's financial results for quarter three, 2019, period end June 30th, 2019, revenue increased 24 Uh, and a half percent to 91.43 million uh, over the same quarter last year. Adjusted EBITDA was up substantially to 10.4 million from uh, 900,000 for the same quarter last year. And I do want to note that uh, this adjusted EBITDA of 10.4 million uh, this last quarter here was actually a record high for the company. 
Uh, and looking at net income attributed, attributable to common shareholders, it increased over 400% to $3.89 million uh, from uh, 759000 for the same quarter last year. So, uh, looking longer term, the company's period over period 12 trailing month revenue actually decreased around 4.5%, but its 12 trailing month net income was a loss of $1.44 million, uh, and this is compared to a loss of $6.47 million uh, for the prior 12 trailing month period. So, just by highlighting these numbers, it's possible to see that the company is working towards profitability despite revenue decreasing slightly. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, the company is still not profitable yet. Just quickly looking at the company's valuation multiples, uh, since earnings are negative on a 12 trailing month period, uh, we can't look at the price to earnings, but looking at the EV to EBITDA multiple, uh, it does have a multiple of around 51 times, which considering the company's lack of profitability appears to be quite pricey. Uh, so that's definitely not attractive in our books. Uh, and just touching on the balance sheet as well, the company is very liquid with minimal to no debt and a large cash balance of around $60.5 million. So uh, given the stock's current valuation and lack of profitability, it's definitely not a stock that Keystone would recommend to clients despite the company's impressive growth uh, and uh, seemingly uh, positive path to profitability. Uh, but in conclusion here, given Real Matter's impressive quarterly results and its path toward consistent profitability, the stock has risen considerably this week and year and has claimed the coveted status of our star of the week. Yeah, it's a good summary on an interesting company, the company that we continue to monitor. Uh, we see it likely as a play on residential mortgage market going forward in Canada and the U.S., um, I would watch residential mortgage origination volumes. That would uh, be a key driver for the financial performance of the company. Um, I think there's some seasonality in the transactional-based business. Their last quarter, Q3 and Q4, so those would be the periods ended June 30th and September 30th, respectively, would be uh, the best periods for the business. So there's some seasonality there. So watching, you know, if you want to watch the stock, I would look at residential mortgage origination volumes. If you see great volume there, this is a business that likely does well going forward. If you see a pullback there, uh, you know, it's affected by other factors such as interest rates, refinancing rates, housing prices, housing inventory, all of that in the housing market. If you see a pullback there, it might be a company that you might look to lighten up on if you own it in your portfolio. The valuations are high right now. The growth trajectory looks good, but the valuations like Brennan discussed uh, on an EV to EBITDA basis are quite high at this point. Let's move to our weekly dog. From our Stars and Dog segment, it's time for this week's Dog. That would be Hexo Corp, symbol H-E-X-O on the TSX. Currently trades around $5.65. Its market cap, $1.37 billion. Uh, the stock is down 13.8% on the week and just under 40% in the last three months. In fact, uh, around 45% since it peaked in late April of this year. What does the company do? Hexo is one of the largest licensed cannabis companies in Canada. The company operates with a $2.4 million square foot facility in Ontario and Quebec. Uh, Hexo is also expanding internationally, has a foothold in Greece to establish a Eurozone processing production and distribution center. The company serves the Canadian adult use market under its Hexo Cannabis and Up Cannabis brands and the medical market under Hexo Canna Medical Cannabis. The company is also uh, in the beverage market. It has a joint venture called Trust with Molson Coors. Uh, it's in the edibles market, the vapes market, the health and wellness, and the cosmetics market. All of those, uh, it has areas where it touches on in its business model. It calls it a hub and spoke business model approach. Uh, what is driving the stock? Well, let's first look at the financials of the business. Q3 results, revenue increased tremendously to $15.93 from $1.2 in Q3. And this was... 
Q3 2018, which would be prior to legalization. So you can see why the growth came in there. It was now legal to sell in an adult use market. That's where much of the growth comes from. Uh, Q3 accounting net loss, however, was 7.75 million. So it's still losing considerable money, amount of money. Sales of adult use cannabis in the quarter were actually down slightly uh, from Q2 at 14.6 million in Q3 versus 14.79 million in Q3. This may have tempered the optimism, the slight down, uh, downturn from Q, in Q2 from Q3 in the business, given the fact that with businesses with high growth multiples, generally the market likes to see solid quarter to quarter uh, growth momentum. And when that stops or maybe takes a pause in this case, uh, the market gets a little worried. Hexo reported in the quarter that it mains on track, management said, to ramping up to $400 million in net revenues in fiscal 2020 and to double net revenues in Q4 fiscal 2019. These numbers definitely sound great, but with the general lack of cash flow in the segment at present, the market is taking a wait-and-see approach and pricing in some execution risk at the moment. Hexo has a strong balance sheet with $173 million in cash and limited debt to help execute on its growth plans. Now, cannabis stocks have been selling off generally of late, powered by some sector-specific regulatory and profitability concerns in the near term. There's also a market risk-off trade, uh, which is coinciding with general market weakness. So it's not surprising to see Hexo hit our radar as our dog of the week. There's not a great deal of company-specific negative news that has driven the stock lower, other than the fact that the stock trades at high premiums to current underlying cash flow and is one stock you'd be betting on future cash flow streams, which at this point can be uncertain. In a jittery market, stocks with this profile tend to sell off, and we're seeing that in Hexo, with the stock nearly cut in half uh, since its April highs. It makes it our dog of the week, but it's a stock we continue to monitor, has a good balance sheet and great growth potential and forecasts going forward. But we do monitor the sector uh, to see if there is some significant profitability in some of these businesses on a go-forward basis. Yeah, I follow a lot of uh, a lot of cannabis investors on Twitter, and you know, just from their posts, I know that the that the sector has been kind of a bloodbath, uh, you know, just recently here. Um, in, in regards to Hexo, it'll be interesting to see if, if they can actually meet those uh, or their revenue guidance of four hundred million. Um, yeah, but, but you know, something I also wanted to you know mention uh, it was maybe a month back or a couple of weeks back, I I believe it was on Bloomberg that I read uh, that across Canada, legal cannabis is still uh, charging or being charged at a premium at, a, you know, about 40% higher uh, than the black market. So I know that the black market is still thriving uh, a little bit um, comparatively. And, and, you know, I, I don't know what uh, the government of Canada will do, will do to, uh, to try to, you know, squeeze the black market. Uh, and, and maybe if they're able to do that, eventually that will you know, allow these uh, these cannabis companies to become more profitable and uh, increase revenues quicker. Um, but yeah, it's definitely the industry. There's a lot of falling knives right now, and I don't know if I'd want to be on the uh, the, the buying end of those knives. Yeah, and, and, I, and you make a great point there. I mean, it is something that certainly would increase the attractiveness of uh, these legal producers if the you know black market could be curved in some respect. Uh, the cash costs and, and what they're selling the legal product at right now, uh, from what we understand, um, is being beaten by the black market. So there's a lot of people that just, you know, continue with their suppliers that they used in the past. So you know, if we could see that curbed to some degree, you'd probably see some uptick in terms of sales. Uh, some of these companies have been curbed by capacity and curbed, uh, their revenue growth has been curbed by capacity constraints and distribution constraints. So you're seeing all of that in a relatively new industry as we would expect. Um, you know, if there's some lofty targets out there. There's a great deal of supply that is coming online over the next one to three years. Uh, so we'll see how that continues to play out. It's certainly a fascinating industry to continue to watch. And, uh, you know, it, it, like we see in any times where there is a risk off trade, where you have a higher risk segment to this, which is less, um, 
has a less of a track record in the market, then you're going to see sell-offs in these sectors. If you're a believer long-term, you probably buy when there's blood in the streets. Uh, you don't buy when you're at a market peak. So we'll leave you with that. And again, I'm going to thank Brennan for co-hosting with me this week. We're going to welcome Aaron back, so all three of us will be here next week. I'm going to encourage all our listeners to continue to send in uh, stocks for our Your Stock, Our Take segment, and we'll continue to endeavor to answer those questions. We're getting more and more every week, so we continue to answer those. Perhaps we'll have a couple next week for you with Aaron back. We'll task him with doing one of those. Thank you very much. Profitable investing. And uh, we'll see you here next week. Thanks, everybody. Profitable investing.